I want to get your take on BIP 119 versus some of the smart contracts we see out there. Obviously, Ethereum is now a household name. Like You can't get it around that. Most people know about DeFi. People are investing in DeFi tokens. And regardless if we think it's all just another uh, token panic or, or some sort of like Ponzi scheme, uh, which is pretty fair to say that in some cases, there are some projects that seem to be doing pretty well. And it would be nice for Bitcoin to kind of take that onto itself. Uh, Bitcoin has chosen not to do that for right now, or at least the community has chosen not to do that. Uh, Before we delve into that conversation, though, can you kind of maybe give us a high level uh, comparison between something like BIP 119 and the smart contracts that most users are familiar with on Ethereum? Yeah. Um, What I like to tell people is that uh, the goal of BIP 119 is to uh, give users access to like 25% of the stuff that matters that Ethereum is doing. Um, So definitely not going after everything, but like some of the stuff is interesting and relevant and uh, useful. And I think we should uh, really endeavor to try to do those things that have really high utility. Um, Relating back to my earlier point about sidechains, like I can't prevent people from using a primitive to do something that maybe we don't like. I happen to like NFTs. I know that's a controversial take. I think they're okay. I actually think that you, you know, like Bitcoin, uh, like there's a lot of froth in the NFT space, but the idea of artists being able to sell their art in a decentralized way that is censorship resistant is very, very compelling to me, given that artists are oftentimes our best, uh, you know, voices against things like authoritarianism. And that's where I think sort of the community like strategically misstepped and like we should have really embraced artists, in particular, like political artists on doing Bitcoin NFTs. Because like that to me seems like a very aligned use case of saying like, okay, well, like Bitcoin is going to be the platform for having a voice of freedom. Like to me, that's cool. But, you know, not everybody's going to be sympathetic to that. Can't prevent NFTs. You know, like once you have, like they already exist on Bitcoin. They existed on Bitcoin first. Uh, What didn't exist, and this is getting to that, that point of like, why are these things happening on Ethereum and not Bitcoin, is that marketplaces didn't exist. And art... And this is why people don't like it. They're like, you only, you don't want this thing. You just want to sell it. Well, like, why am I going to buy something if I thought there's no way I could ever sell it? Like buying an NFT in an off return and I can't sell it. Like I've got to be able to move it in the marketplace dynamics that are available for uh, like, you know, the, the early Bitcoin NFTs are just like nothing compared to what you can do um, in Ethereum. And actually it, it's interesting. Like I have an NFT prototype I'm building in my language for check template verify covenants. And it actually turns out you don't really even need check template verify to make those work. You just need a robust model for, you know, what what that digital asset should be and how your client side validating what's going on. And you can get something that's pretty similar. Um, And then the market dynamics can also evolve. And and so I think that that's sort of where for check template verify in in particular, it's aiming on giving some of these functionalities. Uh, It's aiming to give the composability uh, where you can write a module that is like, let's say, like an option contract on Bitcoin. And then you can use that option contract to sell an option for an NFT. Okay. You know, you have the right to buy this NFT for a month, or you can use it to sell an option to open up a channel with me. Right. And actually, the model for a non fungible good can be applied equally to a lightning channel as it, because a lightning channel isn't fungible, like the stats in it are, but like, You've got specific counterparties and you want to be high, you know, reputation with one another. Otherwise, you're going to get... Uh, I, I saw some people complaining about like people opening channels, routing a ton, ton of stuff through them and closing them and then sticking them with some change recently. I think that was like Ben Carmen was complaining about that happening. Like those are non-fungible assets and you can actually model some of these things in the same way. And, and that's what I see happening in Ethereum is you have these composability you know, things where you can model an ERC-20 token, you can build Uniswap for ERC-20 tokens. And then if you come up with a new ERC-20 token design that handles some, you know, maybe interesting, maybe not interesting thing, it automatically composes well. And, and that's sort of what I'm hoping to deliver with Chicken Blood Verify is not necessarily the, the functionality in terms of like, oh, you can call out across this or across this. But like when you define a structure of a contract, you're able to compose and embed things together in a way that, uh, you know, it is sort of uh, straightforward and obvious.